Hello there, everybody. Data Pioneer here, and I'm out on my favorite distro of Linux, a Debian 10 Buster, today. And I'm going to do a video that I'm going to target uh, the beginner Linux user with. And uh, this is going to be 10 questions to ask about the Linux system. And basically, it's 10 questions that if you were asked these questions as a, a beginning Linux user, you should be able to answer. And so uh, what I will do is I'll pose each, each individual question and then give the visual answer in the terminal to show you how to go about arriving at the answer. And so hopefully at the completion of this video, you'll be a little bit smarter than your beginning uh, Linux user contemporary. And so let's get started in this. It's 10 questions you need to ask about the Linux system and get the answers for. So let's get started. Come join me. So the first question asked was, how do you determine the kernel version running in your Linux system? And that's a simple process to do in the terminal. So let's get into the terminal, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'll click on the terminal, and let me just bump up the resolution here so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so to answer the question, if, if you're asked that question, simply go to the terminal and type in uname, pack r, and it's going to bring up the kernel version for you, which is 4.19.0-6. Dash AMD 64, which is a 64 bit version of the kernel for 4.19.0-6. Now, if you want more information than what uname tech R will give you, then you can type in uname tech A. That will not only tell you that it is a Linux distro, it also gives you the fully qualified domain name for your uh, Linux distribution, which is Debian. Dash 10 dash desktop dash vm dot local in my case, and then you've got other information as well, which is the date and, and things like that of the kernel. Uh, and so, if you're asked the question, this is how you get the answer in the terminal. So the second question is: is how can I determine the IPv4 and IPv6 address? in a Linux system. So if you're asked that question, the way to do that is go into the terminal. I'm back in the terminal again. And for some distributions of Linux, you can type in ifconfig, all right, and that will bring it up. However, in this particular distro for Debian 10, ifconfig is not found. That command is not found. And so the other command that you can run as well is ipaddr, and that will bring up the IP address. And Debian 10, this is what you use. Um, LO is the loopback address, and you don't really need that one. That's not what, what we're interested in. What we're really interested in is this one right here, which is ENP0S3. Now, it may be different for you. This is the wired connection that I have on my system. EN stands for Internet, P0 is port 0, and S3 is socket 3. And so the ENP0S3 represents the connection. The IPv4 address is this one right here. The INET is 192.168.1.57. Just ignore the slash 24 there. Um, but that's the IP address. So if asked the question, that's the answer you give for your question. And then the IPv6 address is this one right here. The INET 6 is this address that follows. And just ignore the slash 64 there as well. And so that's the answer to the question. If asked, how do I determine the IPv4 or IPv6 address in Linux? Get into the terminal and run either the ifconfig or ipaddr command to get it. That's how you find it. Okay, so the third question is, is how do you determine the amount of free disk space in your Linux system? So to do that, go back to your terminal, and you can type in the command df, which is disk free, and use the tac ah switches here, which is the all file systems human readable, and hit enter, and that's going to bring up the file systems on the left hand side, right? The sizes uh, associated with those in the next column, the amount used, the amount available, the percent in use. Right, and the where they're mounted in the system. So let's take a look here for dev sda1, which is the first partition of my Linux system in Debian 10. 
its size is 70 gigabytes. I'm using 3.9 gigabytes of that 70. And I means I have 62 gigabytes available. So I'm using 6% and it's mounted at the root of the file system. Okay. And you have the rest of them here uh, in your system as well. And so if asked the question how you determine the free disk space in the terminal, this is how you do it. Ask the question, how can you determine if a Linux service is running? Uh, a couple of different ways of doing that. Uh, get into the terminal. And if you're running a sysinit uh, system in your Linux distro that you're using, which no Linux distro nowadays is using anymore that I'm aware of, but if they are still using it, you would run a service command. And then your name of your service, let's just choose the secure shell daemon, SSHD, and then status. Okay, that's how you would get it. But for me, that's going to render a command not found. So since my Linux distro is using um, systemd, which most Linux distros today are, and that's probably all you need to be concerned about, uh, run the system ptl command, which is system control, and then status. You have to reverse the direction of the command, and then the service that you're interested in, which is SSHD in this case. And so when you run the system CTL status SSHD, hit enter, it's going to come up and tell you that it's either active and running or it's dead. Uh, it's enabled or not enabled. Uh, in this case, it is active and running. It is enabled. Okay, and uh, that's how you bring that up. Um, you can start, stop, and restart the SSHD. Uh, service or any other service running in Linux by simply replacing the word status with start to start it, stop to stop it, or restart to restart the service using the system CTL and then the action command and then the service itself. So when asked the question, how do I know if a Linux service is running in my system? This is how you do it. Question is how can you determine the size of a directory in Linux? Okay. Um, to do that, you get into the terminal, and here I've done a pwd, which is the print working directory, which pulls up my current directory that I'm in, which is home data pioneer, and I ran a listing of that direct that all the directories of data home data pioneer for my home directory, running the ls command, and so here are all the directories that are listed. So let's let's uh, take a look at classes project. Okay. So how can I determine the size of that? Well, to do that, you run the du command for disk usage, and then run the tac sh or summarize human readable, and then the name of the directory you want to check the size of. So I'm going to type in cl, hit the tab key on the keyboard, to finish out the uh, listing of the name of that directory, and hit enter, and here's my answer. The classes project directory is taking up 20 megs of disk space in the Linux system, and then here's the directory name next to it. So if I ask how do I determine the size of a directory in Linux, this is how you do it. So the next question is how can you check for open ports in Linux? And um, that's more of a network focus uh, question. Uh, that might be asked of you. And so uh, if asked that question, let's go ahead and clear the terminal here. Um, what you need to consider is using the uh, command netstat. Okay, You run netstat by itself. Um, it tells you uh, once it pulls all that information up, it's going to be a lot of information, uh, not very focused, um, you know, on a particular uh, type of connection that's running or service that's running, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so it's going to pull up a whole you know, stream of information here, and uh, that's not really a good solution. And so let's, uh, let's quit that. And um, let me see if I can end this command. Let me go ahead and close the terminal, and let me reopen the terminal. And uh, let's bump it back up again. And so we would run the netstat command to get that information. 
but we would use some switches in order to pull the information we really need to have up. And so here we have uh, T for TCP, okay, for transmission control, internet control, uh, U for UDP. So we're listening, you know, NetStat would be, be looking at ports that are open for both TCP and UDP. L for any ports that are open and listening, okay. We want to list the protocols here uh, as well, and then N for networking. And so netstat tulpn would be the command that you would typically run. And that's going to pull up this kind of information for you. All right. And so uh, notice here we don't have any information on PID program name. Okay. And I'll tell you why that is in a moment. So here we have the TCP ports or protocols rather that are, um, this is the protocol column. We have TCP. These are the ports that are open for TCP listening. All right. And uh, TCP6, UDP, and UDP6. Okay. Um, here uh, we have the RECVQ, send Q, and then here are the local addresses assigned to the ports that are listening. Here are the addresses here. And then whether they're listening or not listening, you'll have the word listen here next to it. All right. There is no information here for PID and program name associated with these um, this information over here in the protocol column. Way to get that is to run the sudo command in addition to uh, netstat tulpn, right? And I need to put in my password for Data Pioneer, and that's going to pull up this information. Okay. Um, and so we have the TCP and UDP protocols that are being uh, acquired here on the network. And we have all the other information. But in addition to that, we have the PID with the process ID and the program name associated. So here we have PID 492, which is a TCP protocol connection, port 22, all right, which is the port. So the port is open. And it's open to PID 492, listening on a program SSHD, which is your SSH daemon listening, okay? Here we have port 631 open, TCP, for PID 431, and it's the CUPS D, or the uh, Common Unix Printing Services daemon, all right? And we have the rest of them down here, all right, as well. All right, so we have even... Uh, here, PID 454 associated with CUPS Browse D here for port 631 UDP, user datagram protocol instead of transmission control protocol, right? And so if asked the question, how do I determine the open ports uh, on my Linux system? Use the netstat command and use the TULPN switch, which is, but also don't forget to use sudo in front of it to get the super user so that you have root access or elevated privileges so that you can get this information, final column, which is PID program D, program name. Question number seven is, uh, how can you check process information, CPU usage, memory, that kind of thing in the Linux system? So the way to do that, the easiest way to do it, and every Linux distro has this particular command available and installed. If not, you can install it, but I haven't uh, met one yet that didn't have it. And that is the top command. And so what the top command does is that checks for the top processes running in the system. And so here you have percent CPU usage for uh, user space, okay, so 0.4%, and system, okay, so 0 0.0 right now for system, 0 0.0 for user here. So it fluctuates up and down. This tells you the percentage of CPU time being uh, allocated for user space and system space. And then we have a megabytes of memory being uh, the total here, 3947.0 total, 62.5 free, 507.4 used. Okay. And then here's your buffer and cache information. All right. And then down below, you have the PIDs or the process IDs associated with these commands. Or like XORG is process ID 486. All right. 
And then off to the column here for CPU usage, it's right now using 2.3% for that particular 1.7% now um, for CPU usage for that particular command, XOR. All right. And so top is the way to do that. Another command that you can run, and sometimes you have to install this one in Linux because they're not always available by default out of the box, is HTOP. And in this particular case, HTOP is not available. And so I would need to install HTOP in order to um, in order to bring up that information as well. Now, another command you can use is the PS command. Let me just run a man page on PS. And so PS says report a snapshot of the current processes. And so the typical command that's used here is, let me go ahead and clear the screen, is PS. AUX, and then you would have to grep uh, for a particular command. Uh, so let's say SSHD. Um, and so if you grep for SSHD, if you don't know what uh, grep is or what the pipe command does, um, you would need to learn up on that. But the PS is for the processes, AUX is the switches that you would use. And so this tells you information about the uh, user of that uh, the owner of that particular process the PID and the uh, percentage of CPU usage associated with that particular uh, process SSHD in this case all right that's how you would get your answer in uh, with question number seven in the terminal So the next question is, how do you mount devices in Linux and how do you manage those? Well, I've got a system uh, pulled up right now here I've, on my terminal. I've got uh, running an ls command to list out all of the um, directories uh, from the root directory and of the file system. And so here, mnt is one of those. And that's typically where devices get mounted in the Linux system. All right. If I run an ls on uh, mnt, Right now, I'm going to see that it is empty, okay? Uh, but in order to mount a device, let's say you have a new device that you uh, have, like a USB stick or something like that. Um, the way to do that is you would run the mount command, and then you would run uh, next to that a space, hash, dev for device. And let's say that it is sda2, okay, which is the partition, second partition on the device. And then... Um, you would mount it where to mount it. So that would be MNT. Okay. And so you would run mount the device that you want to mount and the partition that you want to mount and then space and then where you want that mounted in the system. All right. Which is be this mount directory right here. I'm not going to run it because I don't have a dev SDA2 here in order to mount, but this is the command you would use. Um, if you want to learn more about uh, mount, you can run a man against mount, and this tells you how to mount file systems and other things and other devices in the system, okay? So man mount. If you want to find out the uh, mounted file systems and devices already in your system, you can just simply run the mount command, and that's going to show you all your devices and all your file systems that are currently mounted in the system. And here, the device that I have is devsda1. First partition on SDA, uh, and then it is mounted on the root of the file system. And ext4 is the file system that is running on SDA1. So this is the mounted file system as well. And then here are the options for that particular amount. Okay. Um, so you might be asking yourself, what uh, what file controls uh, mounting of devices? on the system by default. And so the uh, file that controls that is, let me go to that, which is uh, Etsy fstab, okay, which is your file system table. And so I'll pull that up. And so here we are. We're looking at it now, Etsy fstab. Etsy is a directory, which is your, uh, where all your configurations are in your Linux file system. And then fstab, which is a file system table is the static file system information. 
Uh, and it shows you that uh, here we have on the root here was SDA, dev SDA1 during installation. All right. Here's the UUID for it. Uh, and then the uh, location of that particular mount, the file system that it's mounted, it's running rather. And then if any errors are occurring and things, et cetera, et cetera. And so the Etsy FSTAB file in your Linux system is what controls that. And every time you boot up or restart the system, the Etsy FSTAB file is read and it mounts the devices that you currently have attached to your Linux system. And so if asked the question, how do you go about managing devices, mounting those, you use the mount command in Linux. How can you uh, determine what a command does in Linux, how to use it? Uh, the best way to answer that question is to get into the terminal. You have something called man pages, all right? And so let's say the command you want to learn more about is copy, cp, all right? And so you would run a, a man against cp. And when you do that, it's going to give you things like the name, cp which is a command used to copy files and directories. Uh, it's going to give you a synopsis of that CP command. It's going to give you a description of that command, uh, you know, telling you from source to destination or multiple sources to directory. And then it's going to give you a list of switches. And you hit the uh, space bar on the keyboard. You go to the next page. It's going to list out all the command switches that you can use um, or associated with CP. In Linux, okay, and Q will get you out of it. So let's say you want to do a man page on the ls command, which is for listing. And so ls, it'll tell you that it's ls is associated with the list directory contents. Uh, the synopsis is the list option file, and then it tells you a description here: list information about the files, the current directory by default, stored entries alphabetically if none uh, of these nor sort is specified. And then all of the switches that you can use associated with that. And so there are man pages for just about every command um, there is in Linux. There are some that don't have man pages, but it's few and far between. And so that's how you find out information on a command and how to use it in Linux. So what are some of the other ways that you can find out information about a command in Linux? Um, one of the ways you can do it is you can go up on google.com and search for your, your answer in google.com. So if you uh, pull, up, say you pull up a web browser and get into google.com, go ahead and uh, w.google.com. You can go up on google.com and put in your Linux command and hit enter, and I guarantee you that you'll find an answer about what it is and how to use it. Uh, another way is to go up and up on a site called www.linux.org, and linux.org has good information on um, searching here. You can click on the search field, type in the search criteria for um, the command you're looking for and linux.org will pull that up as well. Another good website that I've found useful for you uh, in, in determining what a Linux command is and how to use it is uh, backoverflow.com. Okay. Backoverflow.com is another resource that you can use. You can come up here and type in, in the search criteria and type in your command that you're looking for an answer to as to what it is and how to use it, and you can find it. So Google, Linux.org, and Stack Overflow are three good websites to utilize. All right. Okay, so I hope this uh, video was useful for you. And if so, go ahead and click the uh, up arrow on the video. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And um, this has been Data Pioneer, and hope this was uh, useful. And you have a nice day, and take care.